Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of What the Dementia by Bamboo Care. I'm your host, Brianna Wilson. I am a certified dementia practitioner and the founder of Bamboo Care. So this month is actually a very special month, at least for me, because it is my birthday month. And since it's my birthday month, I thought, hmm, maybe I'll do a podcast every Wednesday for the month of May. Why not? So to kick us off, I'll be doing a Q&A where I answer three questions from our listeners, viewers, and fans, and we'll actually be doing one more Q&A this month. So if you have a question that you would like answered, you can submit your question at letsbamboo.link slash QA, and I'll also put the link in the podcast notes. Now, before we kick off these questions, we do have a couple of things for housekeeping, of course. So firstly, I do want to personally thank everyone who has supported our new Dementia Care book this far with Intent, a Practical Guide to Navigating Behaviors Along the Dementia Care Journey. You guys have no idea how grateful I am, and I am so excited for you all to receive your books and bundles. And guys, thank you so much. I really do appreciate the support. If you don't already know, With Intent is now available for pre-order at a discounted rate. It is currently $4 off. Now, we were originally going to keep pre-orders open until May 14th, which is actually my birthday. But then I thought, hey, why not just keep it open for the entire birthday month, right? So that's what we're going to do now. But if you do order before the 14th, then your order will still start shipping out on May 16th. So there's no worries about that. So if you're interested in investing in our With Intent book or one of our other bundles, or you just want to learn more about our book and other products, please visit letsbamboo.com and then click on the shop tab. And it will also be in the podcast notes, okay? The second thing is that our two May freebies are now available on our website. This month's freebies are our What is Dementia e-packet, where I break down and simplify what dementia is and what it is not, and then our coupon clipping activity for your partner living with dementia. As I mentioned in our previous podcast episode, we did make some exciting updates to our website, and as a part of that update, we did have to switch our e-commerce platform just so we could make purchases and downloads much more convenient. However, with that, this particular e-commerce system does require a billing address even for free downloads, and it's just as a security measure. So you will notice that difference. However, we, Bamboo Care, don't use your billing address for free digital downloads. We only use shipping addresses, and we only require the shipping addresses for physical products so that we can ship your items to you, okay? Now, the great thing, though, is that now you no longer have to go one by one to download your freebies. You can now just add them all to your bag at one time, and then you'll receive a confirmation summary with all the links to all the resources that you selected. So that's pretty cool. Now, also, as to not spill the beans too much, this year is a very exciting year for Bamboo Care, and we have so many good things coming your way. I absolutely love our podcast, but I'm also ready to open the doors to be able to connect with our listeners in a deeper way. So some of you may be able to guess what that means, but definitely stay tuned. Our podcast is not going anywhere, but we definitely will be expanding because I really do want to connect with our listeners. I do actually want to be able to help you guys in a more personal way. So just stay tuned because exciting things are coming, okay? So let's go ahead and get into these questions. So question number one is, why would mom pee in the china cabinet drawer? I just don't understand. Now this is a great question. So let's look at it this way, by kind of setting the scene and instead of your mom, we're going to put you in it. And by you, I really mean anyone listening to this podcast, okay? So let's say you are wherever you are right now and suddenly you feel like you need to pee. Your bladder, however, is no longer strong like it used to be and you don't wanna pee yourself. Let's say you have 10 seconds to find somewhere to pee, but you have no idea where the bathroom is, you don't have anyone to ask, 
where the bathroom is, or maybe you even forget that that's even an option. So where are you gonna pee? Look around, you got 10 seconds, go. So where are you peeing? I can already tell you I'd be peeing in this Amazon box that I have over here. Will it probably soak through? Yes, but it's the best thing that I can get to in 10 seconds without having to run, which can be dangerous to attempt. Now, if I had a trash can nearby, that would probably be my first choice. Now with dementia, it isn't always this logical per se. But typically, when someone pees in an odd place like the trash can, a flower pot, a drawer that just so happens to be the perfect height in the corner or in the closet, it's usually because at the time it seemed like the perfect place to go. Now, depending on how severe the short-term memory loss is, as soon as the event has passed, it can almost be as if it never happened. So you can ask them about it, and nine times out of ten, they will deny it. After all, they would never do something like that, right? It's kind of like, if you're saying someone peed there, fine, but it wasn't me, <laughs> type of thing. So there are a few things that we can do, but I'll give you two, okay? So one, you want to make sure that the bathroom is easy to find, okay? So you can try labeling the door keeping the light on, maybe even putting signs on the wall with an arrow pointing to where the bathroom is if the label on the door just isn't enough. You also wanna make sure that the toilet is distinguishable and doesn't just blend in because it does no good if they can find the bathroom but not identify the toilet. So you wanna make sure that not only can they find the bathroom but they can also find the toilet, okay? Number two, if your partner is agreeable to going to the bathroom at set times, you can try a toileting schedule. So for example, every two hours or every three hours, you will have your partner try to use the bathroom. Now, in my opinion, the best toileting schedules are those that align with natural habits, okay? So I first recommend that you track how often your person typically pees and if there are any time patterns and base the toiling schedule off of that, okay? Now question number two is, can my husband with dementia consent to sex? So this is a big, important question. It can also be a highly controversial topic, and some people won't agree with what I'm about to say. And so as I always say with controversial topics and some other things, take what you can, and leave the rest if you don't find it appropriate for your situation and or beliefs, okay? So the short answer is yes. It is possible that your husband with dementia can consent, okay? The diagnosis of dementia by itself is not sufficient to say that persons living with dementia are unable to provide consent, okay? So let's talk about this. So when it comes to any sexual relationship, okay, consent is important. And by law, any and all sexual partners must consent to any sexual activity. And the biggie with this is that physical arousal alone is not indicative of consent. So that's definitely something that you'll have to be mindful of. So there's a number of factors that we have to consider when it comes to consent. But I would say that the biggest one is the ability to communicate that consent. And so this can be verbal or written consent. This can be through sign language. This can be with the assist of a communication board or device. This can even be through gesturing or nonverbal communication. But there has to be some way for your partner to indicate that what y'all are about to do is okay with them and the same goes for you. And so typically when we're talking about consenting, it's going to be most relevant for people who are in the early stages of dementia and even parts of the moderate stages of dementia. They will still be able to communicate to some degree, okay, 
by various means and be able to consent to something like sex, okay? Now, sex in general can get complicated because everyone does not engage in the act of sex the same way. Not everyone even considers the same things technically sex, right? And so what was once okay in the sexual dynamic of you and your partner may no longer be okay. And so you'll have to fill that out and account for each sexual act separately. You also have to look at consenting to sex as just a scene, not a whole episode, okay? So what does that mean? It means that just because a person initially consents to sex doesn't mean that they will continue to consent. And at any moment, it can become unwanted touch or interaction. It also means that if they consent to sex today, right now, it doesn't make it an automatic consent for round two later or for tomorrow. The door of consent doesn't just stay open, okay? It can open and close at any given moment. And so you have to be very aware of your partner's body language throughout y'all's interaction. Now, if at any time your partner shows discomfort or reluctance to participate, then you need to either one, change what you're doing because maybe it's just one particular thing that you're doing that they don't like. Or you may need to just stop altogether. If they just seem like they're just there and like you're just doing things to your partner and not with your partner, then it's also likely best to just stop, okay? Also, if at any time you no longer feel comfortable with the interaction, don't feel obligated to continue. Even if you were the one who initiated it and they did agree, don't feel bad like, oh, well, I started this, so I need to finish what I started. If you feel uncomfortable at any time during the interaction, your consent can end at any time as well, okay? Now, this is not a black and white topic, okay? And sex is still a pretty taboo topic and people don't like talking about it. I'm not one of those people, okay? I think it needs to be talked about, and I do actually plan on doing a webinar in the future specific to sex and dementia. When? I have no idea, because we do have so many topics to get through, but it is coming and it will be in webinar form. And this is mainly because I do want it to be more interactive. I want people to be able to interact with me and ask any questions that they may have, okay? So I will announce that obviously through my podcast, but if you sign up for our newsletter at letsbamboo.com slash newsletter, then you'll also be informed then too. And then our last question, question number three, is it normal to question yourself as a caregiver? Absolutely. (laughs) Self-doubt is a pretty common phenomenon in general. I feel like people have a tendency to doubt themselves a lot. I am one of them, okay? But it's definitely common when it comes to caregiving as well. And so you may ask yourself questions like, am I making the right decisions? Did I handle that situation appropriately? Should I have done or said that? Is it normal to feel this resentment towards my partner? Is it okay that I honestly don't even like being a caregiver and wish I didn't have to be anymore? All of these questions are valid questions and any emotion that you feel while caregiving is a valid emotion. Now, admittedly, some emotions will be more productive than others, but you have a right to feel whatever it is that you feel and acknowledge those feelings. And there is no need to add another layer of guilt and shame on top of that by feeling guilty about feeling guilty or ashamed for feeling however you're feeling. But if you do, that's okay too. This is all a process, okay? Caregiving is a journey. And you know what? You won't always make the right decisions. You won't always do or say the right thing. You won't always know what to do. 
and you won't always feel proud to be a caregiver. That's normal. And at some point, it's more than likely going to happen, okay? So don't beat yourself up about it when it does. As long as you are trying your best, which may fluctuate from day to day, depending on how much energy and space you have to give, you know, you're doing just fine. You know, the motto that I try to follow is, I know I can't do it all, but what I can do is my best. And so I feel like as long as I'm giving my best, whatever that best may look like in that moment, then that's okay. And sometimes my best might not even be the best, right? But it's the best I can give with what I got kind of thing, okay? So again, I know I can't do it all, but what I can do is my best, okay? And so maybe that model will work for you too. So those are all the questions for this episode. Remember, if you have a question that you would like to answer, you can submit your question at letsbamboo.link slash QA. Again, the link is in the podcast notes. And also, don't forget to pre-order your With Intent book at letsbamboo.com. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of What the Dementia by Bamboo Care. I hope that this episode was helpful and informative. We look forward to catching you on the next episode. Take care, and until next time, stay strong, care on, and remember, you are not alone. Bamboo Care is always here.